So good morning again, gracious ones, and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Phoenix. I welcome you in the name of the ancestors upon whose shoulders I stand, and I welcome you, really, in the name of all that you hold holy and sacred for you. It is indeed a pleasure and honor to be here on this beautiful day. My appreciation for the principles of Unitarian Universalism and what keeps me coming back to these spaces are summed up by the sisters and the brothers from of all places. For me, I get such a joy in saying Dublin, Ireland. And they say, we do not expect you to believe or think the way we do. But only that you try and live a kind and helpful life with the dignity proper to that of a human being. So welcome all who believe that religion is wider than any sect and deeper than any set of opinions. Welcome all who might find in our friendship strength and encouragement for daily living." End of quote. So today's sermon, as Katie alluded to, is called Harmony with the Soul. I kind of did a do we have any NBA ball players or fans that watch the game? So you know what a crossover is? But that title is kind of a little fake crossover. And it'll be revealed as we continue our journey together. It will speak of the concept of the soul in our modern lives and what it may mean to be, quote unquote, in harmony with the soul. Or the wise silence, as our friend Ralph Waldo referred to it, Mr. Emerson calls it that wise silence. Lao Tzu called it the Tao. Plato called it the good and the beautiful. Aristotle called it being. In Zulu, they call it Moya. In Judaism, they call it Ein Sof, that which is everything and is also nothing. The Ka, the Ba, the Ankh is what the ancient Egyptians referred to it as, but us, we call it soul. Today, most of the religions in the world that you can name or think of all have some mention of the immortality of the soul, whether it's Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, Zoroastrianism, Christianity, Islam, Baha'i. It's also prominent in most native indigenous cultures around the world throughout Africa and here in Turtle Island. Some say that the soul will live forever, either in heaven or in hell. But I'm thinking of my universalist friends in Mississippi who looked me in my face and said they call us no hellers because they don't believe in hell. So. <laughs> Others suppose that after death, the soul will reanimate with other life forms in an endless cycle of reincarnation. Now, we can't leave out the non-believers. They're welcome in my head and heart too. Well, they might be right. Most non-believers <coughs> dispute the idea of a soul, being convinced that after death, that's it. There is nothingness. The box you can put me in, I'm there with Ralph Waldo. Put me, I'm kind of like Emerson, however. I'm kind of hooked in what he called the soul of the whole. And the soul of the whole resides in that person sitting next to you. It resides in that person you had coffee with, with earlier this week. The person you frowned at this morning and the person you saw in the mirror as you were getting ready for church. 
Ralph Waldo says, and I quote, that great nature in which we all rest, as the earth lies in a sort of soft arms of the atmosphere, that is that unity, that oversoul, within which every person, particular being, is contained and made one with all of them. You and I, we tend to live in succession, however. We live in division. We live in parts. We live in particles. Meantime, within every person is the soul of the whole. That wise silence. That universal beauty to which every part and every particle is equally related. The eternal one. This deep power in which we exist and in whose beautitude is all accessible to you and I. It's not only self-sufficing and it's perfect in every hour. It's perfect in every hour. I want to digress for a second. I'm going to do, a, we'll get a little Baptist on you for just a minute. Just a minute. We're coming right back. We're going to, I promise. But a song came up. I want you to turn to the person next to you and repeat after me and tell them this. You are lovely. You are awesome. And you are perfect. Now we got to flip that script. Your turn. The listener. Look at that person and tell them. You are lovely. You are awesome. And you are perfect. <laughs> yeah, come on back. <laughs> we don't want to start no mess. But the act of seeing and the act and the, and the thing that's being seen, the seer and the spectacle, the subject and the object are one. Same thing, man. As my Rastafarian brothers and sisters say, one thing, man. One thing. It's all one thing. Digress for a second. My Uncle Albert, Mr. Einstein, says that that is the greatest delusion under which all Western people suffer. That would be us. We suffer from under and live our lives under delusion and the illusion that we are separate from nature. What a delusion. The subject and the object are one, but you and I, we see the world piece by piece by piece. We see the sun, we see the moon, the animals, the trees, but the whole of which these are only shining parts. The whole is the soul. End of quote. By the way, I got a news flash, in case you didn't get the memo. No one at UUCP has a soul. No one in this congregation, whether present or absent, has a soul. No, you don't have a soul. You are a soul. You are a soul. You don't have no soul. So that is the message of my sermon this morning, my offering, the essence of the offering. The belief that we all surrender to the realization, to the idea, to the belief that we are souls. And maybe we could be in harmony with that. Can you take just a deep breath to the possibility that just maybe it may be true? That we are souls on this physical journey on that third planet from the sun, the earth school. Katie alluded to it in the children's story too. See, when I look in your eyes, I'm looking at your soul. That's why I want you to stop being a sidewalk watcher. 
You know what a sidewalk watcher is. You see a pair of eyes coming, and you <laughs> You start watching the sidewalk. No, no. That's chakra food. That's what feeds the soul. That's what feeds, keeps the chakras hot. Yeah, how about you know about that, huh? <laughs> it's a belief of mine. I believe. That's it. Maybe that's why some of us find so hard to look folks in the eye. It's okay. You're looking for your soul. That's what keeps the chakras hot. It's a feeling. Now, it may be hard for some of us because we can't classify, we can't quantify. Where is soul on the table of elements? How much does the soul weigh? What color is the soul? What is its temperature? Well, maybe if it cannot be quantified, maybe it's not real. Maybe it's a fantasy. Well, I think not. How many people here ever been in love? <laughs> Where's love on the table of elements? What color is love? Can you quantify it? <laughs> so I think not. I think like the ancient ones. I tend to think like the Zulu who call it Moya. I tend to be in sync with the dagger of people of Burkina Faso who call it Yilbangura. I just love that word. Yilbangura translates to mean that the thing that knowledge can't eat. Some of you know I've been around for a minute or two and I'm, well, I'm almost a year now, I'm getting ready to tap dance away. And uh, I kind of wear that label sometime of a poet, so I like to share one of mine with you before I ask a show enough poet to step up here. But sometimes I say, I'm empathetic, not sympathetic. Sometimes ascetic, but most of the time just plain poetic. I got a poet's license, don't you get it? I gotta find that rainbow, I cannot not forget it. Cause I'm a rainbow catcher and a word slayer. Long ball hitter and a phrase player. Image maker, rhythm shaker, fear facer, woman loving. Got dozens of word biscuits in my poetic oven. I love to serve, servant to love. Tree hugger, tree hugger. Relationship debugger. Poets, poets, we are the guardians of the uncontrollable release. Poets got license. We be the creative police. I can feel it and I know you know it. So here in this sanctuary this morning, I give you permission. I can feel it and I know you know it. So go ahead. Be a poet. <laughs> mm. One of my favorite poets in the world is the old ancient Persian fellow who goes by the name of Hafez. And Hafez steps up this morning to remind us, and I quote, that all the particles in the world are alive and looking for lovers. Pieces of straw tremble in the presence of amber. His teacher's death unleashed a torrent of ecstatic poems. Lovers, lovers, it is time now for the taste of fire. Let sadness and your fear of death sit in the corner and tremble. Let it sit in the corner and sulk. The sky itself reels with love. There is one being, one being inside all of us, one peace. So all you poets, let every word tremble its wind bell. Saddle up your horse with great anticipation. We are still writers. We are still poets. Soul does still flow in your blood. And it's present in your bone. 
it resonates in a kind of kind of simmering sauce just waiting 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 to be served end of quote so let us be in harmony with that simmering let us simmer in that sauce that reminds us that we do not have a soul, that we are soul. Blessed be. Amen. Ashe.